welcome to quadratic 6.1 the quadratic formula okay in this lesson we're gonna we're gonna bring back something from your past yeah I'm pretty sure in algebra one you guys all learned about the quad formula and here it is it's gonna look a little different from when you guys did it in algebra one but yeah that's the only difference it's, it looks different but it's gonna be doing the exact same computation that you guys did back in algebra one so no big deal there yeah just like I said it's gonna look different as far as it, its first appearance. And the only reason why it looks different is because when you learned it in L1, it was one fraction. When you see it now, it's separated into two fractions. Okay? So not that much of a, of a difference. Yeah? Just visual. Visually, it looks different. All right. So let's go to our first life problem. And let's refresh our memory as far as how it all works. Okay? So hopefully you know that you got to grab your A, B, and C because that's very important numbers. And your A value is located in front of X squared. Your B value is located in front of regular plain old X. And your C is going to be the, the number at the very end that doesn't have a letter attached to it. Okay, and once you do that, you can start plugging in the numbers. Yeah. And it starts off with negative B over 2A. So you're going to put the negative. You're going to put the 5 up top because that's your B. And 2A is so 2 times 1. And actually, you know what I should have done on the side here? I should have actually written what A, B, and C were. So I can visually see it while I plug it in. So A is 1, B is 5, C is negative 5. Okay, if I don't write that down, then I'm going to plug in the wrong numbers. I'm going to write the wrong thing. Yeah, that always happens. Okay, so plus or minus square root of B squared. So I'm not going to write 5 squared because a lot of kids, they make mistakes when they have like negative B values. And when they square it, they don't make it into a positive number because they, they forget that the negative sign is also squared. So we're going to write out the B value twice. Okay, so minus 4 times A times C. Okay, and all of that in the square root. And over 2A, so 2 times 1. All right, so let's start playing with these numbers and let's see what we get. So negative stays the same. Nothing's going to cancel them out. We've got 5 up top, we got 2 in the bottom, so that's pretty cut and dry. Plus or minus, square root of, 5 times 5 is 25, and negative 4 times 1 times negative 5, that makes positive 20, right? Because negative, negative, that makes positive. 4 times 1 times 5, that makes 20. All over 2. Okay, so let's continue on. So x equals negative 5 over 2 plus or minus square root of 45 over 2. Okay, so on the side here, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to break apart that 45 with the factor tree so I can see if I can circle any numbers. So 45 is 5 times 9. 9 is going to be 3 times 3. Okay, so when I write this out, actually, I'm just going to do this to square root 45 on the side here. So, yeah, so square root 45 is known as 3 times 3 times 5. I'm going to get my red pen out so I can circle things that match. So I'm going to circle the 3s. I'm not going to circle the 5 because he doesn't have anything to match with. So I get 3 root 5. Okay, so I'm going to go back to my original problem and I'm going to do this. Yeah, actually, I don't have enough space already, so I'm just going to write it over here. Okay, why is my pen not working? There we go. Okay, back in business. Okay, so x equals negative 5 over 2, plus or minus, and then the square root 45, I'm going to replace it with 3 root 5 over 2. And I think that's it. Yeah, my fractions, my fractions have been simplified. There's nothing else I can do. That's my final answer. Okay, all right. So let's go on to the next one. Okay, so my A value is 1. B value is 3. C value is also 3. Okay, so we're going to do this. Let's go x equals negative, don't forget about that, 3 up top, 2 times 1 on the bottom, plus or minus, b squared, so that's going to be 3 times 3, minus 4 times a times c, all over 2a, so 2 times 1. Okay, so we got x equals negative 3 over 2, 
plus or minus. Inside the square root, I got 9 minus 12, all over 2. Okay, then x equals negative 3 over 2, plus or minus, square root of negative 3. Ooh, that's something that hasn't happened when you're in algebra 1, I believe. Okay, so this is kind of bringing up a recent lesson. I think it was 5152, where when we have a negative in the square root symbol, it's going to turn into an imaginary number situation. So let's simplify this negative 3 that's stuck inside of the square root. Okay, so hopefully you remember what I taught you, right? That your negative sign turns into ii, and your 3, if able to be broken into smaller pieces, we break it up. But in this situation, 3 is already as small as it can get. It's a prime number, so we're going to leave it as is. But we did make the negative sign turn into ii. So we're going to circle them because they match. We're not going to circle the 3s because they don't match in anybody. So we get i root 3. Okay, so we're going to go back to our original problem. And we're going to rewrite the square root negative 3 with the i root 3 instead. So we're going to make the change here. So i root 3 over 2. And everything has been simplified. There's nothing else in the fractions that can be simplified. This problem is done. Okay, so pretty similar to problem A. The only difference is we have an imaginary number make an appearance. Okay, next letter, letter C. Okay, so now we're getting bigger numbers, so it's going to get a little bit more complicated. So A is 4, B is 20, and C is 27. But we're still going to plug it in the same exact way we did the previous two problems. So negative B, so that's 20 over 2a, so that's 2 times 4, plus or minus square root of b squared, so that's going to be 20 times 20, minus 4 times a times c. So 4 times 4 times 27. See, numbers are going to get big, yeah? All over 2a, so 2 times 4. All right, so first fraction, negative. 20 over 8, and I think that's going to make a change also because that's going to have to be simplified. Plus or minus square root of, what is that, 400 minus 432, all over 8. Okay, so let's simplify that first fraction. So negative on the side, 20 and 8, they divide in common by 4, so that's going to be 5 over 2. Okay, so remember, you got to simplify your fractions. Plus or minus square root of negative 32 over 8. Okay, so on the side here, I'm going to simplify negative 32. Okay, so I'm going to rewrite negative 32 into its smaller pieces, so I know negative is going to turn into ii. And because I've worked with 32 a lot, and eventually you will also, you know that 32 is the result of five twos all multiplied together. Yeah, you might not know that now, but like I said, when you've done math enough, yeah, when you practice math, you've gone through the problems, you know that 32 is 5 twos. Yeah, you'll get there, don't worry. Okay, so we're going to circle things that match. So I circle the I's, circle a pair of twos, circle another pair of twos, and one two gets left all by itself because he had no partner. Poor thing. Okay, but what did get circled is... Uh, is i and 2 and 2. So the 2 and 2, when they go outside, they make 4. Yeah, Because whatever numbers go outside, they get multiplied together. So 2 and 2, they make 4. The i goes right next to it. This, the 2 that got left behind is just going to stay inside the radical circle. Okay, so we're going to get x equals negative 5 over 2 plus or minus 4i square root 2 over 8. Okay, and usually in the previous two problems, we'd be done. But we have to look at our second fraction. We have a 4 that's on the outside. We have an 8 that's on the bottom. I believe that can be simplified, right? I think 4 and 8 can be divided by a common number. But you know what a lot of kids do when they make a mistake? Yeah, actually, they make it right here. They make the mistake way up here. They already start simplifying the negative 32 and the 8 already. 
Yeah, and they call this negative 4. So they divide 32 by 8, they make negative 4. But you can't do that. I told you guys that in a couple of videos already. Yeah, this 32 is on the inside of the square root. This 8 is on the outside of the square root. They're not allowed to interact. Okay? The only time 8 can interact with something on the top is when it gets pulled on the outside, like here. This 4 got pulled on the outside. 8 is also on the outside. Now they can interact. Now they can simplify. But a lot of kids, when they make a mistake, they simplify 32 and 8 right here. You cannot do that. Well, you can if you, you can if you want, but I'm going to mark you wrong every single time. Yeah? So if you don't want to be marked wrong, don't simplify right here with 32 and 8. Simplify here with 4 and 8. And if you simplify at the right time, then you'll get the correct answer. If you simplify at the wrong time, you're not going to get the correct answer. So, they both divide by 4, so I'm going to get i root 2 over 2, and here's your answer. Okay, just remember now, do not simplify at the wrong time. Okay, all right, let's go on to our last problem, number, or letter D. Okay, so a is 1, b is negative 2, and c is 5. Okay, so let's plug these in. So x equals negative b over 2a, so 2 times 1. Okay, so with all these negatives flying around in that first fraction, that's where a lot of kids make their other mistake. They forget about the negative sign that's in the formula. They see a negative on the top, so they think that they this negative is the negative from the formula. No, this negative is from b. This negative in the front is from the formula, so be super careful. Okay, and it's going to be b squared, so I'm going to write negative 2 times negative 2 minus 4 times a times c. And all of that over 2a, so 2 times 1. All right, so the negative negative here, they cancel out. It makes a positive 4. I'm sorry, positive, not 4, positive 2. So 2 on the top, 2 on the bottom, plus or minus. Um, square root of 4, right, because negative 2 times negative 2 is 4, minus 20, all over 2. So first fraction simplifies to become a 1, right, because 2 over 2 is known as 1, plus or minus, uh, square root of, what is this, negative 16 over 2. Okay, and a lot of kids, when they make a mistake, they already call this negative 8 because they divide by 2. You cannot do that. Do not call this fraction negative 8 with the, with the negative 8 inside the square root symbol. You do that, that's going to be game over. Okay, so let's simplify negative 16. So you're going to rewrite the negative sign as i, i. You're going to rewrite 16 as 4 times 4. You're going to get your red pen out, you're going to circle things that match, and that's going to be an I and the 4. They match. So when they jump outside, they're going to make 4I. Okay. So we're going to replace the negative 16 that's in the square root on the top, and we're going to see what we get. So x equals 1 plus or minus 4I over 2. So now you can simplify your fraction. So 4 divided by 2, that's going to make... 1 plus or minus 2i. Okay, so just remember, you can simplify. You just got to wait for the right time. Okay? All right, so good luck on this latest twist with quad formula, right? So the fraction, right, is now two fractions instead of one. Back when you learned in algebra 1, it was one fraction. And the, the new twist is sometimes you're going to throw complex numbers as part of your answers. You're going to get imaginary numbers in your answers. So, Remember this stuff right here. Yeah, remember all this stuff that deals with the negative sign turning into ii. Okay, all right. So I will see you in class. Good luck. Bye bye.